Hello and welcome to video 3 for week 10. In the first video, I defined the idea of an eigenvalue and eigenvector. In the second video, I had established an algorithm for how to calculate those. Now we're actually going to do some of those calculation examples. So let me take this matrix, 2x2 two two matrix, 3, 1, 1, 3. This is a symmetric matrix. As I said at the end of the previous video, symmetric matrix, matrices are guaranteed to have the maximal number of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So these are nice examples to do. So let me walk through the algorithm. So the first thing I'm going to do is write a minus lambda identity, and that consists of taking all of the, the diagonal entries in the matrix and subtracting lambda from them, treating lambda as an unknown that we're going to try and solve for later. So then I'm going to take the determinant of a minus lambda identity. So I need to take the determinant of this matrix. This is a two by two matrix. So I have the determinant of AD minus the determinant of BC. So if I simplify that, set it equal to zero, try and solve for the eigenvalues, I get this quadratic. And I should get a quadratic here because the degree of the characteristic polynomial is always the size of the matrix. This is a two by two matrix. So I expect a degree two polynomial. The roots of this polynomial are two and four. So I'm gonna label this as lambda one and lambda two. Those are my two eigenvectors. So that's the first part of my algorithm. Calculate the determinant of a minus lambda identity, solve the polynomial, get the roots. This is a nice quadratic at factors. For higher degree polynomials, we'll off, we're often gonna to have to make do with approximate values. But for nice degree two polynomials, the factor, we can have nice exact values of four and two. So then for each of these, I'm gonna calculate the kernel of a minus lambda identity using these two eigenvalues. So let me start with lambda one equals two. So here's a again, here's a minus two identity. So now I've actually replaced the unknown lambda with a specific eigenvector or eigenvalue two. So subtract two there, subtract two there, gives me one in both instances. So I get the matrix one, 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 one. And then I calculate the kernel of that matrix. So I do that by sort of extending this with zeros, solving the system. I've not shown the steps here, but turns out that the kernel is gonna be the span of the vector one, negative one. I'm always going to get a span here. I'm always going to get a vector in this. Uh, if you get a kernel which is zero here, you've made a mistake somewhere, you should always get at least one. You may get more. Uh, there may be multiple linearly independent eigenvectors for a certain eigenvalue, but you are always guaranteed to get at least one. And then if I want to write my eigenvalue, I can choose anything in the span. Eigenvectors are not unique, they can be scaled. So I'll just write one negative one and it seems like the simplest way to write that. And that is gonna be the matching eigenvector for the eigenvalue one. So the original matrix, if I acted on this eigenvalue, eigenvector, it's gonna give me two times this. And you can double check that that is in fact true. All right, let me go to the second eigenvalue, lambda one equals four. Sorry, it should be lambda two equals four, of course. So now I subtract four from the diagonal elements to get a minus four identity. So three minus four is negative one. That gives me these negative ones. And again, I'll extend this with zeros and solve the system to find the kernel of this matrix. The kernel of this matrix turns out to be the span of one, one. And if I wanted to write a specific eigenvector, I just choose anything from that span. So the eigenvector matching lambda two equals four is going to be the vector one, one or any multiple of it. Let me do another example. Let's take the, again, two by two matrix, zero, negative two, two, zero. I calculate a minus lambda identity. That means taking the diagonal elements and subtracting lambda, zero minus lambda, just negative lambda. So I get negative lambdas on the diagonal. I calculate the determinant. So a times d minus b times c. Multiply the negative lambdas together and multiply two times negative two, subtract. And I get the polynomial lambda squared plus four. I set that polynomial equal to zero. And here I have to stop because there are no real roots. There is a way to do eigenvalues with complex numbers for any of you who are aware of that. We're not gonna do that in this course. We're gonna stick just to real eigenvalues and real eigenvectors. So in this case, we just stop. We say there are no real roots. There are no real numbers lambda that satisfies this. We have no eigenvalues or eigenvectors for this as a transformation of R2. Lastly, I talked about dilation matrices before. I just wanna show you that if we apply the algorithm to a dilation matrix, we get what we expect. So here's a four by four dilation matrix. It dilates the first direction by one, the second direction by negative three, the third direction by four, and it collapses the fourth direction entirely. 
So if I look at a minus lambda identity, I subtract lambda from each of the diagonal elements. If I take the determinant, this is a diagonal matrix, so the determinant is just the product along the diagonal. So I get this, and if you look at this equal to zero, you will get exactly these numbers back as your eigenvalues. One is a root here, th negative three is a root there, four is a root there, and zero is a root there. So I will get those exactly, and if you calculated the kernels, you would find that the matching eigenvector for the first one is the eigenvector in the axis direction one, and the matching eigenvector for the second eigenvalue is the, eigen, is the vector in the axis direction two, and likewise axis direction three, axis direction four. I'm not gonna show all that work in this video, but if you did calculate those kernels, you would find exactly what you expect, that we multiply the first axis direction by one, the next axis direction by negative three, the next axis direction by four, and the last axis direction by zero.